Hello everybody, I'm Scotty. Welcome back to Scotty's Clock World. This is a short clip from a video I shot some time ago about the preliminary cleaning of really dirty clock parts to get rid of years worth of excess oil and dirt before the final cleaning as we'll be doing today. This clock was obviously sitting on a mantelpiece over an open fire for many, many years to get this dirty. Also, most people in those days were smokers, which adds to the shocking condition of the movement. I'll put a link in the comments section below to this video if you'd like to check it out. We're ready to start cleaning the parts now from the movement. This is a solution I've made up. It's made up of one cup of bicarb of soda and half a cup of dishwashing liquid that you mix in together till it becomes a paste. Once that's done, dilute with half a cup of water and then stir it round again and get it all stirred up nicely. And then once you've done that, you then add two cups of white vinegar and stir that in. It's a good idea if you make this up in the sink in actual fact because once you start to add the vinegar to the bicarb, it's going to start frothing and it'll froth all over the place. So add a little bit at a time. I usually put in about a quarter of a cup and then let it settle down, stir it round and then keep going until you've got two cups in it. And it will look like that, assuming your dishwashing liquid is green. It'll look like that when you're finished. Right, we'll start off with the front plate. I'll dip that in our solution, get it nice and wet so we can make a lovely mess of the disc. Move that aside. Now you'll start scrubbing with the toothbrush. All the way along the front side of the plate. We can get some more solution as we need it and when you're getting the solution make sure you go right to the bottom of the of the tub because that's where a lot of the bicarb is sitting so we run over that once these are clean we'll peg out all the bushes get any oil or muck or anything that's in them we'll get rid of that before we start checking to see what the pivots are like in relation to fitting into the bushes I right, just keep scrubbing it round in and out everything we can find then once we think it's done sufficiently we'll drop it into a, a dish of water I've got here that one there dish of water that can sit there for the moment now we'll start on the wheels start off with the first wheel Get some solution, drop it in, turn it round. All right, move our cleaning solution away. And then not resting the pivot on the desk, holding it up in your hand so it doesn't touch. Once again, start running around the wheel. with your toothbrush that makes a nice mess of your desk but it's also going to clean up our parts and that's what we're looking for 
hence the newspaper on the desk. I'll do that. Then pay special attention to the the lantern pinion here. We'll peg that out later on too, but we'll get the brush into it and remove whatever we can from it. Running it backwards and forwards. Turn the wheel round. And along the arbor and the pivot. Give them a clean while we're here. And all the trundles clean. The trundles are those pieces of wire there. That's what they're called. In the lantern pinion. Wet the wheel again. Turn it over. And start on the other side with the toothbrush. Keep topping the the brush up and wiping it down to the bottom of the, of the dish so you can pick up the bicarb soda some of which sits in the bottom it doesn't all dissolve in completely a bit of elbow grease goes a long way in this business as well as patience patience is one thing you learn very very quickly when you start working on clocks. If you haven't got it, or you don't develop it, you won't last long in repairing clocks, especially in the early days, when you haven't got a good idea of what's happening and why things are happening and your troubleshooting skills aren't much chop at that stage, you're gonna get rather frustrated Okay, that's a wheel. We'll drop that into the water. Now, grab the next wheel, put it in, in our solution. Let it get wet. Right, back for our next wheel. Take it out of our solution. Once again, same story. Start scrubbing away. On the top of the wheel this time, because uh, the lantern pinions up there will We'll break with tradition and start at the top. Running round meticulously on the side of the wheel and also the, the teeth. Then back to the lantern pinion. And the pivot up at the top. Right, back into solution again for a moment. Get it wet. And away we go again. Rubbing on the wheel, you can see it's, it's looking shinier already. And we'll see how it looks once we've put it through the naphtha and dried it off. These wheels weren't particularly dirty, the movement wasn't particularly dirty, so we're not going to see a lot of a lot of change, but we will see a change. Up the arbor also. And the pivot on the end. By the way, this solution doesn't go off. You can keep it, put it in a jar. Tighten the top down, so when you're finished, if you're only just doing one clock, well, you probably don't need to keep it. But if you've got a couple of clocks that you're looking at, keep it, put it into the into a jar, drop that into there. All right. There's our parts. Doesn't look too bad, does it? Not finished yet, it still doesn't look too bad. Alright. Let them sit for a moment while I get a container of naphtha. Then we'll put them into the naphtha and clean them up. Now I'll take the parts out of the water. We've had them in. Put the naphtha aside a bit. Give them a quick 
wipe down that'll get rid of the majority of the water sitting on the top and then we'll drop them into the naphtha and they can sit there for a couple of minutes while we do these other wheels dry them off yeah they don't look too bad actually not bad at all right we'll put them into the naphtha dry the other one the rest of these wheels I'll do off camera because we don't need to see every one of them cleaned but I will clean them all offline into the naphtha let them sit there for a moment the naphtha will remove the rest of the water that's on there in the meantime I'll get the heat gun ready we'll take those out in a moment and dry them right the parts have been in the naphtha for a minute or so now I'll move that aside we'll put in a clean bit of cloth here and take the parts out give them a quick flick get some of the naphtha off we'll lie them down here and also our front plate that down there now with our heat gun on low because we don't want to heat the parts up we just want to dry the naphtha off them That's all it takes to dry the naphtha off the top. Now those three parts are finished. We'll have a quick look and see what we've got. That looks pretty good. Nice close up over there. Clean wheel. And another one. And the front plate. I'll go ahead and clean up the rest of the parts in the movement. And then we'll come back and then we'll move on to the next step. Now we'll lay out the wheels that we've cleaned and we'll see how, how they look. We'll put them in the correct order. That's a great wheel because this is the time train. That's T1. That's T2. T3. And T4 which is of course the escape wheel that's the time train put those aside now we'll do the motion works that's the minute armor that's the minute wheel that's the cannon pipe that's the hour wheel and that's the idler wheel. Now for the strike side. We've got the great wheel plus the count wheel on it. The S1. S2. S3 and S4 I'll put that one up there that's S4 the fly that's a strike side train they've all come up pretty well actually right now that they're cleaned we can now look at moving on to the next step which is checking each of the lantern pinions will run over them and peg them out make sure there's no dirt in there we look at the teeth make sure they're clean and we'll run through each one of those they look pretty clean but we'll still go over them with a peg wood and peg them out 